Well, the market is under quite a bit of pressure now. The uh, Nifty is down 256 points. Of course, a large part of the pressure is coming in from Reliance, which is down 8%. ONGC is down 6.5%. As we told you, the government has now levied a tax on windfall gain for refiners. So, that is a big setback for most of these refiners. There's no tax on increased production this year. And there is a, a tax levied only on exports. Um, so, export duty on across the board on fuel has been hiked. But let's uh, get back to tracking other things. Um, the other big question that we're asking is what happens to private equity investments at a time when there's so many challenges, right? Um, there's higher inflation, there's a slowdown in growth, there's a rising interest rate scenario. Darius Pandole, the Managing Director and CEO of P and Equity Alternative Investment Fund, uh, GM Financial, joins us now to talk about that. Uh, Darius, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, India has seen a sharp surge in private equity investments in the recent years, but now things have gotten a bit challenging. Do you see a slowdown in the money coming in? So, uh, good morning, Sonia, and thank you for having me on. Uh, as you had uh, highlighted earlier, I think we are living in an era of increased volatility. There's no doubt about that. And that's reflected in the turmoil that we've seen in the public markets. Uh, we're seeing that global growth is slowing down. Uh, we're living in a regime of higher inflation, higher interest rates. There are massive supply chain disruptions that are creating havoc in various industries. Oil has increased, which is obviously not good for India. Uh, so all of this has clearly taken a toll on uh, the public markets. Having said that, when you look at the private markets, which is basically the private equity and venture capital investments in the country, we've seen a little bit of a different outlook. If you look at either the recent past or even the last five years, there's been a significantly positive and consistent growth trajectory. So even if you look five years ago, the investment from private equity and venture capital had hit a record high. Every year thereafter, that record was broken, culminating in the last year, which yet again was a record high of about $70 billion invested across 1,100 transactions, which shows the confidence that investors have in the Indian private equity markets. Uh, in addition to this investment inflow, what is equally important, if not more important, is the fact that exit activity has also uh, grown very significantly. Uh, and we've seen that last year uh, was a record year for exits as well in India, about $30 billion uh, exited about that, which was a four or five times increase over the previous year. And in this business of private equity and venture capital, it's a virtuous cycle. If you can successfully do more exits, it will result in more investments uh, going ahead. So that bodes well for the Indian economy. Uh, the other defining story of the last year or two was the investments with startups and the number of unicorns coming out of India. Hmm. We're happy to note that today India is the third largest originator of unicorns uh, in the world with over 100 unicorns. So you look at the performance of the last few years, you look at the exit track record, and then you look at the sort of overall Indian macro, which is relatively resilient, sure. uh, relatively stable. Uh, and we think that, you know, this uh, trajectory for private equity and venture capital could continue well into the future. Of course, there'll be blips, of course, there'll be short-term aberrations, but by and large, India has cemented its place as one of the leading destinations for private equity within the Asia package. Okay, that's great to hear. But Darius, you were just mentioning about how, you know, a lot of investments are going into startups in the recent years. Have your investment choices shifted in the last one to two years because of the changing environment? So what we have been doing is we have been focusing on a particular segment in the market, which is the small and mid-cap companies. So we're not doing the venture or the startup risk, which of course has, is a much higher risk, higher return probability. And we're not investing in the larger ticket, more mature companies. But it's these companies that have reached a certain size and now need that a first round of institutional equity infusion to scale up, which is where we come in. And we find that that place is relatively less crowded, that space uh, in India. And there, by and large, the companies, if you can back a good entrepreneur and you have a business model that works, then we've seen that there's been fairly consistent growth in the uh, space of investing in small and mid-cap companies. Yes, yeah, hi, good morning. I don't, I don't know if you'll comment on individual investments, but let me try. You, know, you, you have investments in PharmEasy. And, you know, I believe uh, there's been quite a bit of... Uh, decline in the private market in, in, in its share price. Uh, I mean, even if you don't want to comment specifically on PharmEasy, but uh, w what's going wrong in this space? Because there's a lot of competition also, which is hurting. Yeah. So I'll refrain from commenting on individual companies, but certainly in companies uh, like PharmEasy, where there have been multiple rounds of funding over periods of time, you will find some uh, ups and downs 
uh, in the share price. But certainly in the venture space, there's been a lot of money coming in. A lot of money has come in at valuations that are sometimes difficult to justify. And hence, when the economy hits certain obstacles like we're seeing right now, where we're seeing a whole host of you know, macro headwinds, as I had, uh, mentioned earlier, there will be, in some cases, uh, companies uh, uh, or investments that will uh, decline uh, decline in value. And that's really what we're seeing right now. In fact, one of the positive aspects is that over the last year from an exit perspective, we saw for the first time uh, venture-backed companies were going in successfully for IPOs, even when they were not profitable. The IPOs were being left up by the market. Subsequent to those IPOs, of course, we've seen that uh, the performance has declined uh, considerably, principally because now they're benchmarked on a quarterly basis where they have to show a certain growth trajectory, and if there's any slip-up from that, then they get penalized in the markets. Okay, I guess we'll leave it there today. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, uh, let's carry forward this discussion.